And the last dependency is that they have to share the same key pair account. They have to have the same account between two chains, which means that they need to use the same cryptographic algorithm to generate these accounts. But that's it. So these are the only three dependencies that we need. Uh, all other architectural choices are decoupled. And what I mean by that is, if I want to run a different consensus algorithm from a different chain, or if I want to choose a different peer-to-peer -peer networking layer or a different database, all of these architectural decisions can be done on different chains. So I'm going to give an example of how this is accomplished. Um, this is an example of a transfer of value, so transferring tokens from one chain to another. Before we do this, we need to actually deploy the same ecosystem of contracts on two different chains. After we've done that, we need to register these chains with each other. Uh, register is done via transaction in a normal manner. Uh, essentially, it allows uh, the origin chain and the destination chain to know that the other chain is in the ecosystem and safe to communicate with. And then we introduce a, a shared user account. And so the user first uh, initiates a withdrawal transaction on our origin chain. In this case, it's chain A. And it includes a bunch of these parameters. And these are, these are integral for, for keeping everything safe and secure so that we can cryptographically validate all of the information that's being passed. Uh, origin ID and uh, destination ID, these are basically hashes of the chain's genesis.json file. Uh, the contract address uh, that we're calling, the hash of the bytecode of the contract, and the value that's being passed. You'll notice up in the corner that currently um, the user account has 100 uh, tokens of value. So they send this withdrawal transaction, and then it's the job of the smart contract on chain A to validate these things, cryptographically validate these things. After they've been successfully validated, uh, we process the transaction on chain A, and we move value from the user account to the smart contract. So this is important to know. Uh, smart contracts don't have private keys. And so once you send tokens to a smart contract, unless you provide a way to withdraw those tokens, they're essentially locked in the smart contract. On the other end, on the other side, chain B, we do have a way to withdraw these tokens, actually, uh, or, or take this value out of a smart contract. We call it uh, a deposit uh, call. And so user, after the withdrawal transaction has been processed on chain A, they use the ID hash of that withdrawal transaction as proof to run a secondary transaction on chain B. And so chain B's job is to validate these. It, it uses its light client to make sure that this transaction was processed on chain A. And we know, because they share the same bytecode, that the, that the transaction on chain A also validated all of these uh, parameters already. Uh, but sometimes it has to do secondary checking just to make sure. Once everything passes, we process the transaction, and 100 uh, token value is issued or minted on contract on chain B. And after validation, we send this to the user on chain B. So here's a complete loop of moving uh, value transfer from chain A over to our destination chain, chain B. So what are the benefits of this kind of architecture? So we get to take advantage of all of the benefits of Plasma architecture. So Plasma, if you're not familiar, uh, was a design pattern introduced by Vitalik Buterin and Joseph Poon uh, sometime